the shouts he hears from the crowd are, let him be crucified. As we listen to Isaiah's prophecy, Paul's testimony, and Matthew's account of the Passion, let our exclamations echo those who came to believe almost 2,000 years ago. Truly, this was the Son of God. Today the Mass is celebrated for the people of the parish, John Martini, Charles Durr, Peter Sicking, in memory of the Vatarapa, Martini, and Maldelli families, and Vincent Fodoros. Let us greet our celebrants. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, what? what are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city, to a certain man, and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered, and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish, with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of men for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, 
This night all of you will have your faith and be shaken. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass for me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So, you could not keep watch with me for one hour. Watch and pray that you, will, that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, the man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how will the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out as against a robber, with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day, I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophet may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter, Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, this man said, I can destroy the temple of God, and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus fell silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath, before the living God, 
whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the cloud of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He, he deserves, deserves to die. die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even in your speech gives you away. At that he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crew. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock rose, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What, what is, is that, that to us? us? Look, Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and he questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the, that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast of the governor, was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had finished, assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For they knew that it was out of envy that he had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message, Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, called Christ? They all said, And be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, 
I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered their whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself, if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests, with the scribes and elders, mocked him and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself, so he is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lamech Sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This, this one is calling for Elisha. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and, putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, Wait let us see if Elisha comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two, from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs, after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly, this is the Son of God. There were many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. 
Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there, facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders, then, that the grave be secure until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposture will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I was growing up, and uh, I went to grade school, I, I went to St. Peter's School in Merchantville. And at that time, it was staffed and run by the Religious Sisters Philippine, and one sister in particular, the principal, St. Mary, uh, Sister, hopefully she's a saint, Sister Mary DeAngelis. Now, Sister Mary, or Mary D, as she was known by her sisters, her fellow sisters, uh, was really uh, a force of nature. Uh, a strict disciplinarian who really loved children and Catholic education uh, would clean the floors of the school on her hands and knees just to make sure that it was done right. Uh, and uh, I would have to say that in my life, my, my twin brother and I uh, were the source of many hours of frustration and long conversations, usually at the principal's office. So when I became a priest, she turned to me and said, Father, if I had known that you were going to be a priest, I would have treated you differently. And I said to her sister, if you, hadn't, if you had treated me differently, I probably wouldn't have been a priest. So sister would write, now and again, around holidays, around my birthday, and in the car, she would say, God bless you. And a, a weird phrase coming from her. Father, I fear death. Father, I fear death. I would ask her about it. And this holy nun of God, this woman who dedicated her life to serving Christ, and at least in my personal opinion, served him well, was afraid and wanted me to come to her funeral mass so that I could pray for her. Right now, my dear brothers and sisters, regardless of our level of mental safety and security, I think it's safe to say that for many of us, we have had weak moments and uttered that phrase. Maybe not in so many words, but the same idea. I fear death. I know I do. And I'm in the God business. Right? I'm the one who's supposed to have dedicated his life to Christ and his church to shepherd all of you. But for you and for me, in the times in which we are both anxious and calm, peace-filled 
and on the verge of despair. Steady or emotional, this moment is for us to remind us that if we follow in the footsteps of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then there is no need to fear death because death has been conquered by his love, by his sacrifice, by his giving himself willingly for our sake on the cross. So we shall not be afraid. We shall not get caught up in the hysteria of the world. We cannot, cannot let fear rule our lives. Because we're not a people of fear. We're a people of hope. We are not a people of despair. We are called to be a people of love. And there's no greater symbol of our hope, our faith, and our love than the cross of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what he has done. So as we embark on our high holy feast days, as we celebrate this Palm Sunday, first and foremost, say a prayer for Sister Mary the Angelus. Say a prayer for me. Say a prayer for everybody here today, all those who are watching. Say a prayer for our family members and our friends, all of those who are caught up in this unbelievable and unprecedented time. And cast fear aside. Take up our crosses and follow in the footsteps of our Lord and Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We know that God will never abandon us, so we cry out with our need and the, our needs and the needs of the world, knowing that we will be heard. For the church, that we may sing hosannas to the Lord, giving witness to our faith and to our joy in Christ's saving act, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to religion's persecution in the worldwide, that all people everywhere may have the freedom to worship without fear, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been imprisoned and condemned to death, that they may know the infinite saving mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who will be initiated into the church at the Easter Vigil, that their celebration of Holy Week 
which begins today, may bring them ever closer to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our families, neighborhoods, and workplaces who feel abandoned or forsaken, that they may feel the Lord's tender presence through the compassionate outreach of others, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Stephen Bertinazzi and all seminarians of the Diocese of Camden, help them to respond courageously to their vocation and encourage and strengthen them through prayers to be good priests. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, especially for our armed forces, our first responders, the intentions from the parish website, bulletin, and for all needs spoken and unspoken. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we know that you will never forsake us, and so we call upon you today. Hear our prayers and accompany us through our trials as you did for your Son, in whose name we offer them. Our Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Through, our, through the passion of your holy begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away, his death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
Walk in me, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving, and, and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. together with Francis, our Pope, and Dennis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Now with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. But deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us draw from each other a sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now we'll pray and act of spiritual communion for all those uh, who aren't able to join us for Mass. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. 
since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. That's, that's a bad angle. Hi, how you doing? Just a couple announcements. Um, we are just going to uh, continue as we normally will. We'll have Mass tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m., 9 and 11. Um, also, too, we'll have morning prayer probably around, I want to say, like 8.30-ish or so. Uh, so we, we can pray uh, morning prayer as well. Um, evening prayer will be at 5 o'clock tomorrow. Um, just continue to pray with them for one another. Just because we can't be here together does not mean that Holy Week and Easter are canceled. They're not canceled. You can't take them away from us. We're still going to pray as best we can together. So just, you know, we'll, we'll keep doing this and we'll keep praying as best we can. Um, so I just want to thank everybody for being here today and praying with us today. Uh, our, our, our brave lector and brave organist for, for coming in. Um, because I, I, everybody else is, is self-isolating. I've, I've had to go out for a couple of things that were absolutely necessary. Literally life and death. So uh, I'm, I'm the most dangerous person to everybody. So everybody's super brave. Even our deacon is brave. He's been brave since he signed on four years ago. So uh, just continue to pray with and for one another. Um, deacon, if you can just hand me the Padre Pio prayer so we can pray our Padre Pio prayer together. Thank you. Oh God, you gave St. Padre Pio Pietrocina, Capuchin priest, the great privilege of participating in a unique way in the passion of your Son. Grant me through yours intercession the graces for which I ardently desire, and above all, grant me the grace of living in conformity with the death of Jesus to arrive at the glory of the resurrection. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Oh. Uh -huh.